Okay, everybody, welcome to the first official podcast. We're going to do a little podcast episode today. I have other ones in there's like 10 or 11 in the podcast playlist, but they're not done as a podcast. They're just done as vlogs. I feel stupid because first of all, this isn't even plugged in. You're supposed to do this when you're doing a podcast. Everybody has earphones on and then they have the microphone in the shot. I don't know why. This is just as effective. And so is this. I definitely don't need those two things in order to do a podcast, but people like to have the mic in the shot with the headphones on. I will admit your voice may sound a little better with the microphone right here next to you, but it's not necessary. And yes, I'm using the wind muff inside because sometimes I have fans going or the air kicks on and or the heat depending on what time of year it is and I don't want the noise in the microphone and it does a great job of stopping all the pop noises from my voice so I use it inside like a moron you're not supposed to do that something that I've wanted to talk about for a while are art conspiracies specifically surrounding abstract art so the first thing I want to look at the first conspiracy I want to go over about abstract art is the most popular one that you hear from everybody and that is that there's a lack of skill that's the conspiracy there's a lack of skill to produce abstract art and I know a lot of people feel this way and certain artistic endeavors certain types of abstract art I will agree with that a hundred percent if you're just taking paint and throwing it on there and trying to get your expression of emotions across the page anger and whatever and splash it across that's one thing that's i agree there's not a lot of skill in that it's just an expression and then other people are supposed to appreciate your expression even though you're not really saying anything but the kind of art that i like the kind of art that i do i believe that it takes great skill to do and i'm not saying that because i'm biased in any way I probably am, but I want you to know that there's a reason behind it and I'd like to explain it. So let me just tell you first. So, and I've said this a hundred times. If you like elephants and I paint an elephant, as long as it's decent, just, it doesn't have to be high skill level, just decent. You're going to like it and think that it's nice because you love elephants. And if I use a color palette you like, maybe a little bit of different colored highlights of your favorite colors, you'll like it even more because it's an elephant in the favorite colors that you like. So that's just how it is. I created something that you already have an emotional attachment to, and then you bond with that item. That's how it works. However, if I show you something that's nothing, it's absolutely nothing at all, and you have to look at it and say, I don't know what it is. I'm not sure, but for some reason, I'm attracted to it. I want to look at it, and it's not even a real thing. I think that takes a little bit more skill than just saying, oh, there's nothing to it. You just threw something on a page. If you make conscious decisions of what to develop and how to develop it and textures and shapes and forms that confuse the mind and make it, the mind want to look at something and say, what is that? If that's what you're doing, I think that takes a tremendous amount of skill because now it matters more the composition of how you do something and the contrast and the areas of interest. They matter so much more when the thing itself is not a thing and you have to kind of focus and try and figure out what that thing is, you have to draw people into it and not send them flying off the page. And you know, you can tell when you look at a painting, if your eye sticks to the page or if it kind of just wanders off the corner. So when you're looking at something you're like, okay, that look, you draw it in. Now I'm staring at this thing. I don't know what it is. What could it be? 
That, to me, takes a lot of skill to get good at that. It, you go through a ton of experimentation and a ton of just painstaking, I don't know what to do next. What would look good attached to this other thing I already drew to make it cohesive so that people will still want to look at it and follow along the whole piece and make sure that they understand what's happening and they connect with it, even though it doesn't actually represent anything. A lot of times people think you're just, it's just, oh, it's just haphazard brush strokes everywhere. You're just doing whatever. Now, I will be the first to admit that when I put the color down, sometimes I put, when I do the line and wash stuff, I just put the color wherever. But then I have to consciously go in and manipulate that painting, give it texture and form, and do a little bit of something extra to it to draw someone's attention into it. It's actually challenging to do. If you just throw a bunch of shapes on a page and you give it to someone and they can make it look interesting and draw someone in, I think that takes a lot of skill. It's not just about conveying emotions or something like that. It's about actually making it interesting. Now there's also the idea of making an interesting color palette. I see a lot of people create neurographic paintings or they create things like that and the colors are what strike you there you're like oh wait a minute that color palette works really well together for some reason i'm drawn into it now certain people are different they you're attracted to different color patterns depending on who you are that's for sure some people like bright colors some people like pastel colors i love muted and dark colors so when i see a palette with a couple of dark colors in it and it's harmonious and it works really well together that alone is interesting to me and I just want to look at it and if you then add a very interesting drawing to it something that looks beautiful and you just I don't know what that is but I want to know and I'm going to stare at it till I figure it out that's just a wonderful piece of art to me you're bypassing the subject I think that's huge. Uh, your, your, any connection that someone could have to an item, you're bypassing that. You're just giving them something to look at and hoping that what you're doing is skillful enough to draw them in. And once you get good at it, you no longer have to hope. You understand what's interesting to people and you say, okay, if I do this, it's going to be interesting. And you have to do it in such a way that it holds their attention. Just as much skill as if you were drawing an elephant. So I just want to end this by saying that saying that the abstract art has a lack of skill, especially the type that I'm talking about, is just not true. It's completely debunked. It's not even an idea. It's a fallacy. And there's there it by it changes the way you're looking at it. You're basically dismissing all of the technical points that actually do go into an abstract piece. There are technical things in there between the color and the shapes and the texture and the form, the composition, the the contrast. All of those things are working together just like they would in any other piece. But now you're bypassing the initial emotional response because they don't know what it is and you're creating something that's completely different and now they like it for a different reason and maybe they can't even put their finger on it but for me when i love when i can hand so someone who says abstract art it doesn't mean anything and you give them a piece and they just look at it i don't know this is what i'm talking about it doesn't mean anything it's not saying anything it doesn't represent anything and they sit there staring at it for 10 minutes trying to figure out if there's anything they can recognize that's a win in my book. That's you saying, I showed you a piece and you said it wasn't interesting, but you can't take your eyes off of it, even though you don't even like it. So that's, it, to me, that's saying that there's some skill involved. I want to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments below. We got our troll back. And I, I mean that in the nicest possible heartfelt way. I'm very happy. We I heard from him and I told him I was going to make some episodes on some art theories and he was gonna maybe say something about it so i invite him to do that and and we enjoy him here at the channel so go ahead and leave your opinion down below what you think 
that I'm talking about. If you think what I'm saying is complete BS, I have no problem with you saying that. But if you think that it holds some water, I'd like to hear your opinion. So please go ahead and leave that below. Thumbs up the video if you are going to do some abstract or drawing right now and try and figure out all those things I said and see if that holds water in your own pieces. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Illustrations by.